Radiographic techs, also known as rad techs, are licensed professionals who are in charge of producing images through the use of different radiographic equipment. In this video, we're going to help you answer the question, should you become a rad tech in 2021? We're going to go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs used in this video are available at my blog at the link below. Throughout this video, we're going to use the term rad tech for radiologic tech just because it's easier to use. Rad techs have several roles and responsibilities. They help physicians make an accurate diagnosis through the images they create. They ensure that radiographic equipment such as CT scanners and x-ray machines are working well. They make sure that the images are clear and recognizable to physicians and patients. They assist patients before, during, and after the test. And more importantly, they keep the radiation level at an appropriate level to avoid negative health effects. For more technical information, check out the Coursera course Life, Health, and Radiation. This course is taught by Mark McEntry in association with the University of Sydney, which is in Australia. It retails for $50, currently has an average 4.8 star rating with over 121 reviews. So what is the average base salary of a rad tech? This first set of data is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It is only including base salary. It doesn't include overtime and other benefits. Rad techs actually do really well compared to similar occupations. With an average base salary of over $63,000 per year in 2019, rad techs out earn biologic techs, chemical techs, dental lab techs, medical lab techs, and vet techs. To become a rad tech, you really just need an associate's degree, and it does require a license pretty much in every state. And there's even better news for rad techs. Their base salaries have increased pretty substantially over the past 20 years. In 2019, the average base salary of a rad tech was $35,510. This rose to $63,120 in 2019. This gives us a total wage growth of $27,610, which comes out to about $1,380 gained per year on average. If we were to take this average wage growth for rad techs, in 2021, the average base salary would rise to $65,881. And by 2029, this average base salary would increase to $76,900. And $25. There are a couple variables that go into the wages of rad techs. One of them is experience. As you can see, this is the distribution of pay among rad techs. A starting salary, which would be around the 10th percentile, would be around $41,000 per year. This is an average national wage. Whereas the top 10% of rad techs start at around $89,000 or $90,000, and they go up from there. In 2019, the lowest paying state for rad techs was found to be the state of Alabama where the average base salary was $47,290. Meanwhile, the highest paying state for rad techs was found to be the state of California, where the average base salary was $86,120. There is a $38,830 difference in base wage between the state of Alabama and the state of California. In this map, the darker blue states tend to pay rad techs more money than the lighter blue states. Other high paying states for rad techs include the state of Hawaii, Washington, Massachusetts, Alaska, and the state of Oregon. And these are just base salaries for rad techs. In many instances, rad techs are entitled to overtime depending on need, usually in the hospital or industry or work environment that they are working in. We'll get into the work environments of rad techs a little bit later in the video. Next up, what is the job market like for rad techs? Is it a competitive occupation? Is it hard to get in? Would it be hard for you to get a job if you entered this occupation. The first thing to note is the size of the rad tech workforce. It is pretty substantial compared to similar occupations. The rad tech workforce is bigger than the biologic tech workforce, chemical tech, dental lab tech, and vet tech workforces. Although the rad tech workforce is smaller than the medical lab tech workforce. There are advantages to working in an occupation that has a very large workforce. Usually this means that you can get job opportunities in every nook and cranny across the country in various different states. So compared to similar occupations, the rad tech workforce is substantial. Although the number of employed rad techs has been changing 
over the years. In 1999, the government recorded 177,850 employed RADTECs. This hit a high in 2011 of around 220,000 employed. It seems that the Great Recession did influence the number of employed RADTECs across the country. From 2011 to 2013, the number of employed RADTECs fell. Employment did bounce back a little in 2019. The government recorded 207,360 employed rad techs. The government is optimistic about the future job prospects of rad techs, mainly because this is a healthcare occupation. They're expecting a 9% growth in jobs for rad techs from 2019 to 2029. This is due to the fact that the baby boom generation is getting older. As this giant generation gets older, they're going to consume more and more healthcare services. And this is most likely going to drive more and more employment for rad techs and other healthcare professionals. So how competitive is this occupation? Well, to determine this, I use Indeed.com. Indeed is an extremely popular job search engine. They pull in job postings from many different sources. There are a lot of job titles for rad techs. These include x-ray tech, x-ray technologist, CT tech, CT technologist, Rad tech. There are quite a few job titles. When I added them all together, it came to 11,768 job postings for people in this occupation. We can compare this total number of job postings to the employed, which was 207,360 in 2019. This means that there is one job opening on indeed.com per 17 employed rad techs. This means that there isn't a shortage of rad techs, but it's not oversaturated either. And most of these job opportunities are gonna be in certain work environments or industries. In fact, 61% of rad techs work in hospitals. That makes complete sense. 18% work in medical labs, 14% work in doctor's offices, and 3% work in outpatient care. So if you become a lab tech, there's almost a 60% chance that you're gonna be working in a hospital. So that covers the job market for rad techs. The next question is, would this occupation be compatible with your personality and interests? To determine if this occupation will be compatible with your interests, definitely look into taking a Ryasek assessment. There are quite a few free Ryasek assessments all across the internet. After you take one of these assessments, you get scores in six different themes. With rad techs, they tend to score high in the realistic and social theme. People that score high in the realistic theme tend to really enjoy working with their hands. They tend to be practical, thrifty, and tend to enjoy building and repairing things. Meanwhile, people that score high in the social theme tend to describe themselves as helpful, cooperative, kind, cheerful, and patient. Many people that work in healthcare score high in the social theme. These individuals tend to enjoy helping, empowering, and instructing others. As for the most likely Myers-Briggs personality type to become a rad tech, it is the extremely rare INFJ personality type. This is also known as the advocate. The second most likely type to become a, a rad tech is the ISTJ, the inspector. Third most likely is the commander, the ENTJ. And fourth is the architect, also known as the INTJ. So if you take a Ryasek assessment and or a Myers-Briggs personality test and your results kind of line up like this, this occupation might be compatible with your interests and personality. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming a rad tech in 2021. Compared to similar occupations, rad techs make pretty good money. Not only do they make pretty good money in 2019, they've had pretty good wage growth, meaning they will probably continue to make pretty good money going forward, especially compared to similar occupations. To get into this occupation, you really only need an associate's degree. The number of jobs for rad techs was influenced by the Great Recession. Rad techs lost tens of thousands of jobs in just a few years during and after the Great Recession. But employment seems to be bouncing back. The number of job postings on Indeed.com for rad techs is actually really good. There isn't a shortage of rad techs, but there isn't an oversaturation either. Are you a rad tech? What do you enjoy about this occupation? And what do you dislike about this occupation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.